Hey, Scott here. Uh, Bart has not joined in yet. He must be taking a little break. I've got the invite out to him. I thought I'd go ahead and go live and just let the uh, notifications go out, let people start joining. Uh, do a little recap here and just talk about our Whiskey of the Year choices, as well as whiskey in general, 2018. A few people starting to filter in now. Uh, Bart is not here yet. Invite is out. We'll wait for him to come in. But, uh, like I say, I thought I'd go live, let some people start joining in. Whiskeys of the year. Simeon. Hopefully, is that Simeon? Do I have that right? Good to see you as well. West Jolly is back. Go Habs. Claire the third. Claire, I want to say the Tomatin runs 110 pounds, I believe. 100, if, if I remember right from the live stream, I think it was 105, 110 pounds at the, at the distillery. It was, the, I believe, either the most expensive or the second most expensive of the five casks that you can buy. So a lot of people don't buy it. So that was why the one we had had sat in the visitor center for up to an extra two years. Uh, so that time really helped it. Here comes. We're live. Oh, Lord. I didn't yeah. know you. Why would you take it live before I was in? I I've been texting you. You wasn't around. I was like, where's he at? I got my email up and running. It just now came in. <laughs> I was literally sitting there waiting on an email. Oh. I'm I just thought I'd go live. That way the notification could go out. People, and we would hopefully... You know, we might lose some people. It'd be like, oh, it's taking them too long to get set up. I got things to do. Go mow the yard. I thought maybe you ran to the bathroom or something. I was like, where is he at? <laughs> I was sitting there. I've literally had the email like open my whole, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And then just now, ding. And I was in within like five seconds. I thought, okay, no big deal. He had to go to the restroom. Nope. Uh, anyway. Uh, Claire had asked what I was telling about the, the price of that tomato at the distillery. I believe it was 105, 110 pounds. Extremely reasonable. Yeah. Uh, Wes Jolly is here. Go Habs. Jolly. Stimion Del Vecchio. All right. BB oh. Jap. Bourbon Sane. Mark I've Slinger. Gonna, I've got to go break out the chat here now. Uh, Mark Slinger says uh, he got a Tomatin PX today. It's still the same cask number, uh, must be that we had, bottle number 598. It was 95 pounds, and it's 17 years old in 10 days. So he must he got one of the last bottles out of that cask, I bet you. And boy, did he get it for a steal. That's just one heck of a good price. I mean, that, that's a beautiful price, beautiful bottle. Yep. Howdy to Eric Gilbert, Tom R. Like I said, if you're, if you're already doing a distillery tour through Scotland, I know you got to go north, but get up there and, and go to Tomat. It's phenomenal. You know you don't have to, like, actually lean over into the mic to talk for it to pick you up. Right, but I like it. Sometimes when you come in a little close, it does give you a little more of the bass. <laughs> So and it, I was watching our last I was watching our last impromptu live stream and yeah. you keep man you keep you just keep edging over you're working over you're getting closer and closer to it right in the middle of the counter yeah. Right yeah I like to come in and just hello like that You've got yours on a special mount pull yours down show it Look at that You're like Howard Stern right But there. I don't I don't have to keep coming up here so people can hear me oh. Oh, that sounds better. I was yeah. actually watching Joe Rogan and he was like, get closer to the mic, get closer to the mic. It sounds better. It brings out the bass. So, and well, yours did using, sound uh, better there. Yeah. But they use also the, really the, uh, the sound isolating ones that you have to be on top of because they eliminate true. all the background noise. Very true. Very true. Hold on. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So yeah. Okay. I'll relax in. Relaxing in, baby. Still sipping on some of that peat. Peat week, Balvany. Hello, ding, ding. 
Dustin Silvestri, that's DH Silv too. He goes by both. Uh, responsible for naming uh, Make America Pete it again. Nice super chat, Dustin. Thank you. He says, I called Pete Week Whiskey of the Year when it came out. A true winner. Yeah. I mean, I unbelievable. Think was, I think he just commented on, on a video too as well. It might have been... I don't remember what, oh, it might've been on the Brook Lottie or something. I think was he did Dustin, didn't you say you've gone through like four bottles or something of it? Mm, you and me, brother. Where, Kismet. Where did I see that at? Yeah. Well, whoever did that, we could hang. We uh, could hang out. Although there'd be double the whiskey, uh, Pete whiskey consumption. Uh morning to James Rowe. Haven't seen you tune in before, James. Good to have you here. Dude, look, uh, look at that. Silky voice. Go Go Habs wants to know why is a 10 year old Isla so much more expensive than a 10 year old Speyside? That's a good question. You know, I would, ha I would hazard a guess. Maybe some of it is quantity produced. Maybe some of it has to do with the peating process. I don't know how much that, that imparts on a distillery. And Isla's well sought after their casks are more expensive. We were told that we were looking around at maybe sourcing a cask that uh, that could be dummy picks. And uh, we were told Isla casts are more expensive. Uh, DH Silv does say, yeah, he just opened his fifth bottle. Uh, and he's going he's gonna to do a side-by-side -side with the Port Charlotte 10. Genius. Look at that. Living the life. Opened the fifth. Now I feel like I need to buy a fourth. I've only bought three. <laughs> Because, you know, it's pretty soon it's going to be the op four. And if the op four is not as good as the three, I'm going to be like, dang it. Why didn't I buy seven? <laughs> uh, Whiskey Crusader says a good time this morning, Scott and Bart. Thank you much. Appreciate it. And Roy uh, is here, Octa Vite, uh, about Go Habs comment on the price of the 10 year olds. He says market demand versus availability versus marketing and what the market will pay. Nothing, sure. nothing about quality. Love the Pete. That's all I'm saying. Love the you Pete. You know, that one, the Pete week, I only have the one bottle. It is, I mean, it's on my list. I would like to have a second bottle. I've debated mm. it. Every time I'm in the store, I look at it. Mm. Uh, there's just so much other stuff that's on my list as well. I need seven. <laughs> I'm going to just sipping this now. Next time we go out whiskey shopping, I'm, I'm right before we leave. I'm sipping a little bit of Balvenie or oh, Ot 3 Pete Week, and then I'm going to go get it because I forgot how very good it is. Knew it was good. Saw it in the store. Wanted to buy another one. And I thought, you know, I've got three, two and a half now. And yeah, I should have done it. There, there's still a few bottles around. Uh and that's the same with the McAllen Classic cut. The 2017 is still around. The 2018 has started to show up here. Uh, the problem is the 2019 is not that far. I've seen pictures of the 2019 in some lo locations already. So yes, we are getting live before the games later. <clears throat> 3.45 our time, the games go. Football. Well, yeah, and that actually played a little bit of a role into our deciding to go live with uh, with our top fives as well. Because we we're like, if we do it on Saturday, should it replace the normal nine o'clock video release? Should we do it before the playoff games? Should we hold it for Sunday when there's playoff games from noon to six? And so we, we finally decided let's do the 10 o'clock spot and uh, before the playoffs. So, yes. Now, uh, I know we're coming in relaxed, but uh, in a little bit, we're going to just talk about some of our, we decided not to do a top like five list of our 2018 experiences, but we had a great 2018 as far as a lot of different things we did. Um, so we'll get into that in a little bit too, a, lot, a little more relaxed. It's not confined. It's not its own list. It's just, it was a unique year for the dummies. I think it's really the, the first time we started doing stuff as the dummies, uh, traveling around. Uh, being being invited to uh, stuff that wasn't local. We've been invited to some whiskey tastings and stuff local. You know, the thing is that we really haven't done that much advertising or that much really push to get involved in different events or different things. We've uh, we both have full time jobs and uh, right. 
it just you know, it's, it's demanding trying to keep up with with everything. So well, full full time family, full time job, and then uh, I was getting full time dummy for a while there, and we were both getting wore out. Um, we even had to turn down the invite to that St. Louis uh, uh. whiskey. F it wasn't a whiskey fest. I forget what it was called, but and that yeah. one, what? Yeah, I was gonna say it was like a oh. Kind of like a, a whiskey show, I guess. Not necessarily a whiskey fest, right. but uh, all the distributors, wholesalers, uh, yep. whiskey folk and stuff were there. So, Yep, and we would have liked to have gone to it. Um, uh, we had a Beam Centauri rep that was like, you got to get out there. Come on. So, and we couldn't, we couldn't get to that. Oh, and we've been invited where we ran our, one of the, the restaurant where we ran our gathering called the scotch and sirloin great name they've got some lovely older scotch in there and uh after we did our our uh, live tasting with smws during the gathering the uh, manager said uh I want you guys to come in if you're willing we just did a full remodel we're almost done actually they were still doing some of the facade and and we want to if you're willing we want you to sample some of our older whiskeys we got and uh if you'll do a show and we were like yeah They've got a lot of McCall in there, Scott. Yeah, they do. I know. I was just in there last week, so. Yep. So uh, I've got to I've got to hammer that out. We're trying to both of our schedules. That's part of the problem. Both of our schedules are busy, and I want to just pick a date and then tell you that's when we're doing it. But I know there's some things in flux, so I've been I've been trying to figure out when we can do it. Uh, let's Eb head. Eb heads in. Eb heads here. Ard Baggy was tuning in. Uh, on on Gia on Gia. Uh, Claire the third wants to know if we ever found any Booker's thirtieth. Did not. Never even saw that here. Never. Uh, Bourbon Sane. Bourbon Sane was tuning in on the top fives. Roy had asked him if he'd started a YouTube channel. Bourbon Sane says, "Yeah, he he did. He just started it in November." Brand new, just getting it up and running, and we were a major part of his inspiration. Sweet, good. We, we assume yeah. no responsibility, no yeah, liability. You show, up, you show up with a manga shirt, boom. <laughs> uh, let's see. Mark Brown says uh, you can be uh, their house scotch experts. We like that. That would be cool. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So they do have quite a nice McAllen aged whiskey collection. Mark was here for the uh, fifth anniversary. He left us a bottle of the J. Henry and Sons cast strength bourbon, which we just reviewed. That should be coming out in a week or two. Well, no, let's see. Um, this Wednesday should be our top five bourbon slash America's whiskeys. Right. And I think the next Wednesday would be. Now, next Saturday is our update to the gassing Ooh, experiment. That's going to be cool. You guys want to tune in for that. I didn't think there would be much change. All I'm going to say is tune in. <laughs> <laughs> tune in that one was interesting uh do we have any intention to attend the bourbon festival in new nolens no nope we, not now anyway although i'd love to get down to new orleans they've got one of the best world war ii museums uh in the country been there yep it's nice it's big i'm jealous so uh the the dogs are in the house bird dog and big dog Woo, double dog, baby, double dog. Uh, so DH Silv 2 is doing a side-by-side -side with the Pete Week, o, I call it the O3, Bart calls it the Ot3, against the Port Charlotte Ot 10. Three. He said DH Silv is saying the Port Charlotte's too sweet and comes off a touch artificial, but only next to the Pete Week. Oh, wow. Pete Week's so good. I got to tell you that that um, the Pete Week caught me by so, I mean, it just was a surprise. I mean, I hadn't even, I mean, it wasn't even on the radar. So there's some things, you know, the uh, Lagavulin unlimited release, I'm always thinking, okay, that's got a potential. You know, they're, they're right in my, they're right in my lane. Well, let's add, and, let's add, let's real, real quick. Sorry. Has anybody had the 2018 12 year before Bart? Yeah, no, Bart finished. Because yeah. we've seen it here, but we haven't heard anything about it yet. 
which makes me think that it paled a little bit from the 2017. Yeah, I mean, since nobody's really raving about it or had it yet, that's what I was wondering as well. <laughs> G-Cap missed the, the wardrobe change. Yeah, it was live, baby. <laughs> I was like, I was waiting. I was like, when's he going to send the invite? And then I thought I'd have a little lead time. I didn't even want to leave the computer because I was like, any second now, any second. I thought maybe you got struck by the morning, the morning <laughs> duties. Nope. <laughs> I was literally thinking, man, we're going to lose viewers. Reconnect, reconnect. And then you're like, we're live. Where you been? I'm like, what? What? Scott Slattery is tuning in. Kenneth Canelty, George Kaplan. Yeah. Uh, do, do, do. Aqua Vite just picked up that 2018 version of the 12 year log of and he has not opened it yet. Mm, we got to hear about it when it does. Uh, Tom Mar, that's what we were talking about. The 12 year log of Ulan, the new 2018 edition. If anybody's picked that up yet, so yeah, it's probably, and I mean, it's, it's probably still worth picking up. It's, no I doubt it's going to disappoint. Sure. But is it as good as that 2017? Probably not. We're going to have to find out. We're going to have to find out. Uh, of course, it's $120 a bottle here as well. Wow. I could get almost two Balvenie 14s. Mm, oh, 14s. Yeah. What? Oh, okay. about three. I thought you were going to say Pete Weeks. Yes. I get a special deal. Not that special. <laughs> <laughs> I walk in, they're like, we know you covet it. $60. <laughs> Woo! Okay, that's not true. And DH Sill says that log of Ulan's $160 a bottle in Kentucky. That's pretty pricey. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Uh, 150 in Chicago. So maybe we better go pick it up for 120. Yeah, I don't know. I might be magnetized to the op three. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's my nickname for it from now on. Ot three, baby. Ot three. All right. Well, let's get, yep. get into the whiskeys a little bit. I was just going to say, let's do that. I think I got to pour a little bit more of that. I got to pour a little bit more. I realized a couple of honorable mentions that I had that I didn't even bring up. I forgot about. Oh, really? I was getting ready to talk events. Dalmore, Dalmore Portwood, I would give an honorable mention to. Okay. So 40, they bottled this one at 46 and a half percent, a little bit higher for Dalmore. Uh, not bad price, $90 in our area. Uh, great port that influence is. on it. That's a good price. Why honorable mention? I mean, what's the port come out with? It, well, just honorable mention because it wasn't top five. Sure. I know. I know that part. I mean, but what, what hits you with that port finish? You, no, you say, that good, great, good, good port influence on it. About 46% for uh, Dalmore. Uh, I was really surprised by it. So Nika uh, coffee malt would be another honorable mention for me. That was a good one. I, I was kind of thinking I might go buy that one. Um, Tom R wants to know about that port Charlotte 14. You know, that was a cracking one as well. That one is very good. Um, I hated to have too many not available. So I wanted a, I want a good, I even hate, I, I didn't hate having the tomat, both that tomat and the Buna Haben Fagiel are both just great drams. You can't deny that. Um, I hated to have a list. I suppose you could do two lists. Uh, you, could, you could do, you know, one list of really ooh. cracking overall great drams that no one can get anymore. And oh, then you boo. could do one of uh, readily available, but. I mean that 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 was I mean that was a great one as well. I mean it's very rich, but but uh, um, I think it was on my short list, but it didn't really come in. Uh, I will tell you that that uh, Fagiel, that Boonhaben Fagiel, was on my short list. Yeah, the addition for McAllen's on my short list, um, and the uh, I think. The uh, Boone Hobbin signatory here. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's that. Uh, that's that independent bottling 
that yeah. was there as well. And uh, uh, Zach, Zach Andrews yep. gave us that down in Austin. Yep, Zach gave us that. And then I removed it. Um, I had the Logville and 12 Limited 2017 because I don't think we, we didn't shoot it until early, early January. But I definitely had it in 2017. That was on, I, I think we've had that in our list, though. It, we did. Last we year. did. I debated causing a stir and putting it on again because our show was like, I don't know, it was like January 19th or something that yeah. we, we actually reviewed it. But then I decided, no, these are, I mean, these are solid entries. And uh, as much as I like that 2017 Lagavulin, I thought there's no need to do that. No need. Um, experiences. Do you want to talk about some of the experiences? Yeah, sure. Let's move into that. Well, I wanted to bring up Drams for Fams. So that was uh, that was our first time we really, you know, it was the, uh, and I'll get their full name wrong, but it's the Edmonton is at the Scotch Society. I always get their name wrong. I got their shirt. Great shirt. I just say Edmonton Scotch Club. There you go. And they've, they've had that uh, um, fundraiser that helps uh, with the food bank, and, and we jumped on board with that. We had Gillespie on. And I got to tell you, it was it was a, a nice, fun way to give back. We auctioned off our first uh, set of the uh, coin collections, our, our, uh, our whiskey hat collections, and, and that was fun. And so uh, just to open up, that was one of my fun things from 2018. Yeah, I agree. And uh, first fundraiser, you know, that we've been involved in. And I thought it went really well. Would we raise sixteen hundred or eighteen hundred dollars or something like that? So yep. the food bank of Kansas literally contacted us and said, Did you mean to send sixteen hundred plus dollars? <laughs> yeah. Was that an accident? Did you put an extra zero in there? And Scott was like, No, that's it. That's the and they're like, Wow. <laughs> so and he said, uh, whiskey fans from around the world would like to help out. And they were like, unbelievable. We got a card this Christmas from them and everything. So, yeah, that was hilarious when they're like, hey, we're just contacting you. We think you accidentally put an extra zero in there. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, uh, what? Uh, this is a big donation. What? What? What's going on? Yeah. Was this an accident? Did you accidentally add a zero? I thought that was hilarious. So that's – that's uh. That, that was one of mine, uh, my uh, highlights for sure. Uh, real quick, hello to Trini and C. They're just stopping in to say, to say good morning. Ah, and good morning. a shout out to Roman uh, from France that's tuning in. Roman. But anyway, so the Drams for Fams, I think that's March, April time frame. We'll try to, we're going to, as far as, we'll, we're going to be involved in that one again. So... When will okay. we do our? I know they got uh, Lana Lou got involved with them with the uh, Tampa um, Whiskey Club down there as well in Florida. Yep, beautiful. I want to throw out um, the uh, Kilt Crawl with uh, Simon Brooking, uh, Lafroy, uh, Beaumore. Uh, that was uh, that was fun. We had the Piper. Uh, we toured around. Um, Got to hang out with Simon, do the special little show with him, uh, the little after event where we were telling stories and stuff. That was just fun, and it was in Kansas City. It was close, and, you know, I got to tell you, there was a moment on there, and I always look for those special moments. We were on the uh, their local bus that kind of takes you around from their locations, and all these folks, like 40-plus folks with kilts on, are packed into the bus. We're near the bagpiper. There's all these other folks that have no idea what's going on. And we start singing songs and the bagpipes are going. And it was just such a fun moment and that uh, you're just like, wow, I'm here and uh, and I'm part of this. And so that was a fun one. Just that moment on the bus was pretty unique. You know, that family, there was like a family had been out at, di at dinner and they came on with little kids and they walked on with this crowd of, of nice but loud people and bagpipes going. And I was like, this is awesome. So that was one of my other 2018 events. Yeah, I agree. Um, and again, you know, Simon reached out to us. Uh, he was going to be in Kansas city. Wanted to know if we could come up there and meet with him. So we got to go up there and hang out. Um, 
you know, and I thought maybe we'll go up, we'll meet Simon and he'll do a quick tasting with us 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Uh, and then we'll do the kilt walk at nighttime. And we got up there and he really had the whole day set aside uh, just for us. So he sat down, we sat down all afternoon with Simon, uh, tasted, you know, Bemore's, Auchentoshans and, and uh, Lafroig's and really just chatted. We had lunch, mm -hmm. got to sit down yeah. and talk to him and that was a great time. The other highlight that night was we're at one of the bars and a lady comes up to Scott and says, what do you have on under your kilt? And I was like, yes, yeah. And you had shorts on. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the bag piper, she then asked him, slightly disappointed that you had shorts on, and he said, Lassie, nothing but my socks. <laughs> and she was like, oh, my God. Woo. So that was, a, that was another fun moment. I was like, nothing but my socks. I got to remember that one. So... That was that was uh that's why that was enjoyable. I mean, here we were doing different stuff uh, in Kansas City, fun time. You got one you want to throw out? I've got a whole list here that's pretty darn cool. But no, it's all. I'm sure it's all the same. So I mean, you know, Austin happened before that. So Austin was a great time. First time uh, we've been invited. Whiskey Vault invited us down to the Crowded Barrel opening in Austin. Of course, mm -hmm. it was hotter than dirt. You know what? God dang yeah. it. Roy hot. came in, got to meet up with Roy, uh, Bill, the whiskey dick, Chad and Sarah from It's Bourbon Night. Just got to spend the weekend hanging out. Uh, Daniel, well, I gotta tell Daniel you. and Red from the Whiskey Vault. Yep. A moment in time was picking Roy up at the airport. You know, I mean, he's out there and we're picking him up. And and uh, the instant kismet. It was, you know, he gets in the back, uh, and immediately it's like, we all know each other. There was no lag or no like awkwardness. It's like, we know each other. We've always known each other. Even, even though it was only virtually, it, it literally was not like it was only virtually. <clears throat> but yeah, that was good. Yeah. Austin was fun. Yeah, I remember you had all these ideas, like we're going to shoot this, shoot this, shoot this. And we just were like. We kind of just were flying by the seat of our pants at one point. Yeah. You know, the best thing was how calm I was when we were doing the man on the street interviews with the microphone. You oh. love that part. Yeah. <laughs> I almost got throat punched. <laughs> that was the end of the day. Bart was, yeah, was tired. I was wore out. And I, I'm not a man on the street interviewer, apparently, when I'm wore out. I forgot about Claire brings up the porta potty story. Porta potty story was pretty good. I forgot about the porta potty story. That is true. Our bad boy was bacon. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then finding out there's an oasis about seventy yards away with full on air condition. So and, yeah. So now we got to let's just start at the beginning and tell that story. So yeah. uh, we were actually. Uh, Google Maps had us timed pretty well. We were to get to Austin. We drove from Wichita. It was eight to 10 hour drive, I think. Yep. Uh, and we're trying to get there about the same time that Roy is going to land um, flying in from Scotland. And I think we end up there about 30 minutes early, which isn't bad. Mm -hmm. It's 104, 105 degrees in Austin. This is August. Hot. So we're driving around the airport. Well, they have a, a lot that's marked the cell phone lot for people that are waiting. It's quarter mile, half mile away from the terminal of the airport. So you can pull in there and park. There's some, some shade trees in there, not very much. And most of them have already been hogged up by people that beat us there. You did find one and you're one hell of a backer. <laughs> I would have never been. I'm like, you can't get into that spot. You took it as a challenge and you went in like butter. Yeah. <laughs> a lot, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So we we're sitting there for a little bit and we and we'd been driving for our, our last bathroom break had probably been two or three hours at least before that. Mm. Mark's sitting there and he's got to go to the bathroom. Right. We're, sit, we're sitting underneath this scrawny tree for shade. 104 degree heat and in our rear view mirror by this building that's under construction is a porta potty. Yeah. Open to the public. So Bart's like, I'm going to go hit that porta potty up. I got to go. He says, I've been holding it too long. <laughs> too much coffee. 
And I'm, I'm like, all right, you know, knock yourself out. It's hot. Yeah. You're like, that's going to be an experience. <laughs> so Bart, Bart runs over there to the porta potty. He's gone a couple and he comes back just drenched in sweat. <laughs> I mean, it's like he's been in a hot box. Rambo mm -hmm. coming out of the hot box in Vietnam, leeches all over him and everything. That's true. I had the head bandana thing going. <laughs> <laughs> but he feels better. Right. So I'm like, well, I suppose about time we better roll towards the terminal to pick up Roy. So I put the Tahoe in reverse. We back out of the stall, start to pull forward. And all of a sudden around the corner of this building that we were parked behind is a uh, one of the newest looking best yeah. uh, gas station convenience yeah. store stops about 50 yards away. Yeah. Shimmering, shimmering like an oasis in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, Oh my God. I'm like, what the hell? And I there's mean, people. And then I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm just going to go in this gas station right here. Yeah. yeah it was, <laughs> it was like frigid in there. I'm like, I'm coming in just to enjoy the cool. I'm like, I'm, I'm getting catching the chill, catching the chill in here. It was very nice. It was well kept. It was it was gorgeous. I'm like, holy moly! I just went through a a chemical slash melting plastic experiment. Not pleasant. Um, do 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 do. Uh, um, Ed had wanted to know when we're coming to Europe. We may very well be in Ireland in April time frame. Maybe we got to see We're uh, we've, we, we can't put it all out yet, but we may be uh, invited to a place. Well, we've been invited. Can we make it work? Which ties, yes. that was gross. Anyway, uh, that ties into uh, DH Silve, DH Silve, DH Silve's question of uh, when are we going full time with the whiskey reviews? I don't know. You know, that's a ways down the road. Yep. So, yeah, originally, it was going to be at least, we thought, uh, 78 years from when we started. We're at five. Um, so even there, we've got a little bit of time. And uh, I, I would say we've got to continue down this road, uh, if I were to guess at this point, for another five years. It's working. Uh, we're able to, the show content, I think, is good. And uh, the only thing we won't be able to do as much of until we go full time is some of these traveling events. They just they really zap our time and our, our uh, ability. Uh, Octavite wants to know if we can tell the falling down story. It's not safe yet. That's all I can. Yep, can't can't, can't do it yet. However, if you're ever in person, I can tell the falling down story. That's an in person story. You got to see all the physical gesticulation that's going on. Uh, our review, we just shot the other day, our review of Compass Box Juvenile. So that'll be coming out probably, I bet you it should be two weeks because next week will be the gassing experiment update and then Compass Box the Juveniles after that. So, Yeah, we have filmed that. That is true. Well, let's see. Um, well, we can't, we can't not speak about the gathering. Right. I mean, that was huge. And I got to tell you, so we organized this thing. We weren't sure how many people would come. Um, we weren't sure how many local people would be involved. We actually had a lot more people, in my opinion, coming in from non-local. I mean, we did have at the at, at the uh, the Scotch and Sirloin, the SMWS taste, we had a lot of locals show up there. But we had literally more people traveling in than we had uh, interest from some of the local whiskey groups, which surprised me. Um, but the best part for me, I'm not saying for everybody, whoop, William Slattery's in, baby, 999. <laughs> Solange Dummies on a great 2019, yes, sir. What surprised me or what I, what I, and I, there, I had a little bit of a hope for was the after event hanging out. The bottles were out. They were open. There was, there was some great whiskey just there that was brought. Whiskey's meant to be shared, the whole whiskey fabric. And it was amazing. It was so good. I took my shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I still like the the best part for me. I've said it a couple times. Was the Saturday morning and that well, it turned into just Saturday afternoon, hanging out at the hotel, doing live streams, doing some other recorded shows with uh, the Scotch Four Dummies and Eric Waite. You know, and we 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 got there when we planned on it, which we thought we would be there early afternoon. You know, it was noon, one o'clock when we get there and we get set up and going. I wish we would have been there about nine in the morning, just so we had more time to. I agree. And we talked. We don't know when we can do it again. We would like to do it again. Um, I don't think we can do it yearly, but uh, but we would like to do it again. I agree. Not only were the the unplanned special event or uh, spontaneous events nice the live shows that were going on and having that live audience was was spectacular and uh and you're right i mean we looked down and we're like whoa we've got to start packing up we got to get to the actual official event and there was a part of me that thought man what we're doing right here is gold gold and uh so definitely that will be like a feature will be, I could definitely see just having that where there's live events and, you know, the sniper weights running his show, the scotch for dummies, just having all that going and collect coalescing in one spot. But I mean, the spontaneous singing, there was a night manager that worked at this hotel. There was literally a grand piano that said, do not play. She's over there. She's playing it. Drew from Scotch for Dummies. Little did we know he's in a band. He plays keyboard. They're singing stuff. Uh, Cousin Shane showing up the next night. There's a, It's like a concert's going in in there. <laughs> people not even associated with the dummies are wandering in, seeing all this scotch. There's people singing. I felt like it was 1942. Wichita had Boeing in there. They were building planes. And, and it was bustling, and I felt like it was like a period in time in this old hotel where people are hanging out at 1 in the morning and were just singing around a piano. Uh, I mean, it was it was amazing. We got up and sang, um, oh, I'm going to forget, we're all just singing, um, oh, shoot, well, Billy Joel's song. Um, piano Man. Piano Man. Oh, my God, it was just awesome. So, yeah, that so there you go. All that stuff was just crazy. Sandeep was checking on me. I like Ebhead. You see his comment there? He says, guys, I I, ha I now have three photos of you on my fridge. People wonder what's our relation. <laughs> Close. <laughs> <laughs> now that's awesome. Uh, thanks, Bourbon Zane, for tuning in. Appreciate it. You got to run. Speaking of that, uh, we if... Uh, if uh, you are a Patreon um, supporter and you provided your address, your cards are out. And I've got leftover ones, so new Patreon supporters Bart. still get a card. Bart, you don't have to lean over into the microphone. It will pick you up. You can sit up straight. I'm not leaning over. <laughs> <laughs> your face was like barely in the picture. You're like over here like this talking. Dead. To become a Patreon supporter now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look at that. Bart. It was like an intervention. Bart. Bart. Stop. All right. Well, that's the gathering. Let me throw out. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that the screen grab for this uh, thumbnail for this video. <laughs> but arrow pointing to you. Bart gets schnockered on a live stream because you're, you're like. Right. Oh, well, this is impressive. <laughs> Let's see. I've got some stuff in here. Uh, that one seems weird, but there we go. Um, well, I've, I've got Iron Root on here, so you might as well mention that was another good one. Iron Root slash Nancy. Nancy Fraley. Yep, and you know what? She's uh, She said, hey, she wants to uh, do some more stuff with us. Definitely. Fun stuff. She said uh, something about pipettes and graduated cylinders. Right. And that was the first time that we've been at a distillery where we've gone through and sampled straight from a cask. Oh, got Roy. Him. Oh, he's got to make the pasta. <laughs> yeah, you got this. Here's the 2019. Thank you, Roy. Thanks, Roy. I do have a uh, comment for Roy real quick, and that was that uh, – 
I thought you might bring it up, but it was very impressive when he gave you that blind sample. That was early, early this year. And uh, and you uh, went, yeah, the, uh, yeah, and you blind, went through blind challenge. Yes, and you picked out the old one, and and uh, and then he did like a little video that showed how far you've come with your with your like tasting ability. And I gotta admit, because he was like, at some point in time, I will do this for you. And I was thinking, damn, I don't know if I can measure up. <laughs> I'll, I'll be tasting something be like, this is the old one right here. And he'd be like, no, he is dumb, man. This one's only two years old. It doesn't even, can't be called scotch. I'll be like, God dang, I look like an idiot. And then he'll be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I don't know, man. Scott was nailing that, that list. Uh, Drew, yeah, I was going to say, and Roy just commented, Drew uh, with the scotch four dummies is up next. He just got the line challenge sent to him. Wow. Well, I'm nervous now, Roy. You can keep that for a couple more years. I'm a little intimidated by Scott's expertise there. Well, so what happens when, when Roy sends that out, when I did it, I got to nominate the next person that got it. So I nominated Rob Whiskey in the Six. Nice. And then he nominated, I think, Drew from the Four Dummy. So Drew, maybe Drew nominates Bart. No, no, not ready. Not ready. <laughs> Yeah, that was, I was a little bit like, whoa, I don't think I'm ready for this. I saw how that was put together and I was thinking, man, and then you killed it. I was like, whoo, he'll send me something that'll just be like, like, like smoked peated water. And I'll be like, this is some of the best peated whiskey I've had. And he'll be like, prank call, baby. That ain't even whiskey. And I'll be like, dang, I look like a J.A. <laughs> No, no, you did great on that. I literally had that on my list because I watched that. I mean, that was entertaining. And uh, to see you puzzle through and and work on that and then uh, to really pull out the uh, the different pieces of the experiment was really neat. So that was fun to watch. Good job on that one, Roy. He's got to go make pasta. <laughs> Is that code? Is that code, Roy? Well, let's see. It's uh, five o'clock there, so yep, dinner time. That would be. I can't believe he makes the pasta. All <laughs> right, what else you got? I think that's about it, really, for 2018, the fifth anniversary. Austin, Kansas City, Denison. Live show with Tomatin, of course, but we've already kind of covered that with the uh, PX bottle. Denison. Definitely. Iron root. Yeah, yep, definitely. Definitely. I think I told somebody again, Denton the other day, and I don't know why Denton's on my mind. Oh, that's in Texas, but it's not there. Um, I, I'm going to bring up your do it yourself shelves. They look great. <laughs> I look in the background and your background is morphed into unbelievably cool. And, uh, you know, I'm like, wow. I mean, they just, they, so I'm going to bring that up. The display factor, what you got going on there. It's just awesome. Yeah. So it's worth saying. Uh, next step is lighting. I need to figure out some lighting. Well, I don't even know if you need to, I mean, you can get some LED pucks that just literally pop in underneath there. That or some LED rope lighting I'm looking at. So, okay. And, uh, yeah. That would be good. But yeah, I mean, it looks good already. And then the, uh, the color you already had on your walls really just works well that tangerine kind of color really looks good and i've been uh, i wanted to point that out i figured maybe you wouldn't i actually don't like it really i thought it i thought it really sets your bottles off nice it looks like a a touch of sunshine i mean if you look at your uh yeah it works well because look how the shading comes down close to the shelf and then it opens up and it gets a little brighter and it really sets your bottles off nice what were you looking at? Black? That'd be terrible. Well, this has been painted for years. We um, this has probably been painted for ten years, like this. So it was it was this color before I moved. That kind of started doing the whiskey stuff in here. But I think I would like a, a more of a, a brown color. I think it's this uh, uh, what do they call it Tuscan plaster or something. Was the mm. uh, well, I like it. I think it really sets your bottles off nice. It gives them a light, uh, and then the shading's nice. That's just me. I don't think you need to do anything with that. 
I don't know. Everybody tune in there or show up. Yeah, the rope lighting. Uh, oh, he said that rope lighting doesn't last is what Eric Gilbert said. So uh, Tom R says to look into the Phillips Hue LED strip lighting. He has it. It's really impressed. So, okay. uh, yeah, the 12 hours of boom come up. A couple of people talked about that. That is a great time. I tell you, that's a lot of work, um, but it's worth it. That's, that's fun. It's a good time for sure. That is good. I do have the 12 hours of boom on here. I hadn't gotten to that one yet. Um, we had the funny one. Well, not funny, but we had John Glazier come on via phone. And I enjoyed that because, you know, I mean, he, he didn't know us well enough to go video or anything. The The interesting part was the having him on via phone was great. What was hilarious to us was the cell phone to London cost like $130. We could have had him live video 1080p streaming and it's free. It's like, what is going on with the charges? I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, here we got voice only and it's 130 bucks. We could have live hung out for nothing. Yeah. And it's like, there's, there's a, there's a tech gap that's already being bridged there. I mean, look how we're able to hang out with, with Roy. And I feel like he's literally, you know, neck. I feel like he's in town almost. So, but uh, that that was something there. So that was that was a fun event as well. Yeah, that amazed me too. You can hook up Google Hangout, Skype, with any you know, cost nothing, right? But you make a phone call, and actually, it was it was one hundred and fifty bucks. One hundred and fifty. One hundred and fifty. Yeah. I mean, we didn't even know. We were just thinking, well, there'll be something. There's probably some international connection. But then Scott was like, hey, we just got the bill. It was 150. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fine. Okay. It's part of the show. We're good. But I'm like, how in the world is it 150 for audio? We could have gone live like we do with Scotland all the time, and it's nothing, costs nothing. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, I'm sure we could have even fixed up a Skype call that would have been free and everything. I mean, it was just amazing what was going on with those fees and stuff when we've got 1080p video going on. So the world's a changing. We love it. Uh, it was great having John on. Uh, he, he told us as well, if we're ever in his neck of the woods, if we're ever in London, we can come by and we can sample whiskey right out of his little tankards there. I want to do it. Eric Gilbert says he can't hear you. If you could lean in a little bit. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. I like the way you talk, brother. Uh, Simeon is saying the originals are the best. What more is to say the original, what of our review are the original reviews. I see you comment and Bart's leaning into the mic again. I don't think you need to be doing that. You know, I see what you type. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> Bart probably gets done every time. He's like, I'm a, I got a kink in my neck. Every time yeah. we do a live stream. I, you know, I like to move around, you know, I don't want to just be like, you know, just <laughs> yeah they're gonna think i'm a robot or something you gotta be coming in you gotta cycle through you gotta grab a bottle you gotta have some coffee coming in you gotta have double glasses i actually took it easy i had uh i, I had a dram of the glendronic 21 and it's lasted me everything but that's all i've got a lot to do today so i've got to uh that's that's my limit for the show unfortunately i'd like to have another one but too early on a saturday yeah, I'm, I've gone down the road a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> what was we? Oh, when we did our top five bourbons, America's whiskey of the year, you were sampling each one. Then we got done. You're like, oh, I think I've had a little too much. Yeah, I think if we go anywhere, you drive. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, I did pick up, you know, that same day we were running around the other day. And I just, my nephew was here. I just did a quick hitter on this one. I released last night, that orange Curacao barrel of the Parker's heritage. Mm. I remember we were at Jacob's and I saw that sitting there on the shelf and picked it up and $77. I thought that was a hell of a buy. Wow. I will tell you guys when the, uh, when the uh, compass box juveniles comes out, you got to watch me go right at the glass hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's worth tuning in for that. Self-driving cars, it'll be a game changer. Thank you. I've called that, baby. Called it. I've got a whole deal on that, that it's going to change vacationing. 
It'll literally, I think the highways will be packed at like two in the morning with people in self-driving cars that are all asleep headed to their next destination. You'll literally like leave, you could leave Wichita. It's an eight hour drive being Denver in eight hours. You go to bed at 11, it wakes you up, you get gas. Maybe you don't even need it. You're on a charge. Who knows? There's no gas in it. And you wake up in your destination. You don't need a hotel. You're there hanging out. You've been sleeping in your car. Boom. It's it'll, designed. It'll happen, just not by 2020 like you think it will. Well, the sleeper cars won't happen by then. We've already got Teslas. We got a guy at work using a Tesla to get in. He's a he's almost a clerk. I'll just say Batman. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, I don't. I didn't know that. But yeah, somebody told me who's driving the Tesla, and I'm like, what? Who in here has got a Tesla? My little little girl. Oh, me, me. I'm like, did you? Did it drive itself here? He goes, well, I pulled it out of the garage and then it, and I pulled it into the parking lot. Otherwise, it was in control. I'm like, bam! <laughs> Look at that. And I uh, love it. I don't know where he got the money to do that, though. But I uh, love it. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I picture the highways just packed with travelers and the hotels being pissed off because nobody's sleeping in minute anymore because – you're traveling while you're asleep and you just, it's almost like teleporting. You just show up in the next town and you're well rested and you're like, let's go all day, go to bed next town, eight hours away. So. Uh, how do you do Chris Beaton? He just tuned in and uh, Andreas Toft is here. He says, hello. He did a comparison between McAllen 12 and the McAllen 12 double cask yesterday. Very similar, but was able to make out which one was which blind. Wow. Yeah, they are. Uh, both are very good, but the McAllen, the original McAllen 12 is much more of the just the sherry. It, well, it is, it's just sherry Oloroso finishing, where the uh, the 12 is the European and the American oak uh, it wasn't, finished. It wasn't Batman. It was Bat Van. That's all. That's a little code that we have. Scott knows what I'm talking about. Yes. I will tell you, as long as they got that, and let's be really conservative. If they got that by 2050, I'll be 80 years old, dude. I just don't want them taking grandpa's keys away. I think they'll, they'll definitely be out by uh, 2050. I bet you you could probably see even more probably about 2030. I can see up your nose when somewhere you're in there. Up your nose. I, got, I was just getting close to the mic. It sounds better. It sounds better. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, no, by I mean, if, if they've got it by 2050, Grandpa's happy because they'll they'll be like, uh, Grandpa Bart, we got to take your keys. And I'm like, boom, self driving car. You ain't taking Grandpa's keys, no how. And that'll be it. Uh, they won't even have keys though. Right. It'll just recognize my DNA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. Tom R. Bart, the billboard lobby won't allow sleeping in cars. You will never see what is being paid for. No, you're not sleeping in your car is driving. You're rolling down the highway, baby. You're rolling down the highway. You're not sitting out in a parking lot. You're on your way to your next destination. They will insist on rumble strips before each billboard to wake you up. Oh, I see what he's saying. They want, oh, hell no. That'll be outlawed. That'll be outlawed, Tom. Yeah, there's nothing, or, or you'll just be able to blank out your car windows. You won't even see it. Who's driving? Not you. It'll be black. Eric Gilbert says I need to trim my nose hairs. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know what you were doing there. That was weird. It's weird. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, someone's in need of a trim. It's a brave new world now on our doorsteps, but we will be able to handle such new tech. Oh, hell yeah. It makes life easier. If you can handle the old stuff, you can handle the new stuff. Anybody remember using a rotary phone to make a phone call? Your buddy would have a, what was the worst number, the nine or the zero? I can't remember. There was this uh, video. It was on Fox News or CNN News had it. There was a couple of uh, family unveiled a uh, old rotary phone to their two teenagers <laughs> and they gave them four minutes to die. They gave them a number, you know, for them to dial and they could not figure out that uh, phone. It was hilarious watching them. 
Well, I mean, I remember when someone had a phone number, I want to say they had a nine in it. It was like, geez, it's going to take forever. And if you had like the one, it was like, click, 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 click. You could dial a lot quicker because you didn't have to wait for that rotary to turn. And my boy was like, what are you talking about? What kind of phone is that? I'm like, yeah. You had to put your finger in a slot, spin the rotary thing around, and then it slowly unwound back. And then you did the next one and the next one. All right, let's wrap it up. We've moved off of whiskey. I need to get more coffee. I need to eat and get my Saturday going. Ah, I've got a Saturday. I got to get going too. I agree. So scotch it, you scotch gods. Well, thanks to everybody scotch that tuned gods. in. Thanks to everybody that tuned in. Uh, we Thank you. This we Saturday love morning. And uh, you guys are wonderful. I've got a kink in my neck. I feel I good. Why. I feel like my back hurts. <laughs> Uh, cheers, Bart. Great 2018. And well, if I'm going to cheers you, I got to pour a little. Yes, you do, sir. Cheers yeah, to everybody. Hold on. Thank, um, thank you to you cowbellers. That's a new term, cowbellers. Thank you to the cowbellers out there. I will tell you, uh, check out Patreon if you're not on supporting us already. It really helps us travel to these locations. Scotch it, you Scotch gods. Slauncha, dummies. Yeah.